in my previous video, I showed you how to step away from Adobe software in case you don't want to be stuck on a subscription-based software model for time-lapse editing. In today's video, I'm talking about one of the key pieces of software I talked about in that video, which is, of course, LR Timelapse. About four months ago, LR Timelapse 7 got released, which is pretty mind-blowing. I think I've been using it since version 2 many, many years ago. And in this video, I want to show you a demo going from beginning to end how to use LR Timelapse 7 to edit a holy grail or day to night timelapse sequence without using Adobe Lightroom. Because a lot of people, I think, aren't aware that you can use LR Timelapse by itself to create high quality master timelapse video files from your raw photo sequences without having to use external software. That's some of the exciting stuff that got added in LR Timelapse 6 before we now are at LR Timelapse 7. Skip ahead to the demo if you want to using the chapters down below. In case you're new here, I'm going to briefly go over what LR Timelapse is and what it's used for. And I will also go over some of the new and exciting features of LR Timelapse 7. And then the demo starts. Disclaimer, I get a little bit of income if you buy LR Timelapse through my link, which is how you can support this channel if you are considering buying that software. Let's have a look at what LR Timelapse is. The tagline, LR Timelapse provides the most comprehensive solution for timelapse editing, keyframing, grading, and rendering, and it has native Mac and PC versions. No matter what system you're on now, if you're on a new computer, it is incredibly fast. It supports RAW, JPEG, and DNG support from all cameras. I've thrown so many different weird things into this software, and it deals with it thanks to the great back-end support. It now works standalone. It's actually done that since the previous version, but as I mentioned, I think a lot of people have missed that. And it works with Adobe Lightroom Classic if you choose to still use that software. You can animate and keyframe over 400 of these Adobe tools. So gradients, cropping, uh, white balance, exposure, you name it, you can keyframe and gradually change those settings. It obviously uses a incredibly powerful algorithm. We call it here the Holy Grail Wizard to go from day to night or from night to day which is for some people still the most challenging type of time lapse you can create. There is lossless multipass visual deflickering built in, which is one of the key things you don't want in your time lapse is annoying flickering. As you can see on screen here, this is what a, an unedited time lapse looks like, and this is what we will be making with it. There's also the LRT motion blur, which I rarely use because I like to get it right in camera, but it's a great option to have if you need it to get some super smooth results. You can obviously render in all types of codecs, professional codecs as well, up to 8K resolution, fully color managed workflow, and now also true HDR images to video workflow. This is a new addition. Also some filters for long-term or construction time lapses, which I've been getting into lately. And then of course, powerful batch capabilities. LR Time Lapse 7 got released, when was it? Uh, Earlier this summer, well, it's not summer anymore, it is now fall, Cozy Boy fall, hence my brown hat. Uh, some of the highlights of LR Timelapse 7, high performance, proxy buffering, up to 50% speed increases for deflickering and visual preview updates after the first generation of those. That is an incredible performance. You don't have to wait uh, the same amount of time every time you reload something or you change a setting. So huge performance gains. Also performance gains in the internal editor, which is the color grading tab on the side where you can change your exposure, white balance, contrast, vibrant, saturation, etc. Uh, JPEG visual editing is a big one that's new. You no longer need raw or DNG files to edit a JPEG sequence. You used to have to have a, an intermediate file, but now you can go on the JPEGs, for example, if you're shooting on an action cam or a cheap uh, pocket camera, for example, that doesn't shoot raw files. You can now do basic editing and the flickering, etc., on JPEG sequences as well. Full HDR support in the LR Timelapse export plugin and HDR video rendering, which is exciting. I've been working on that chapter for a while, and only now do I feel that we are properly supported by other softwares for actual HDR video generations from raw sequences to HDR video files. The Holy Grail Wizard, optimized feature for the slider. You don't have to slide them around yourself anymore. This will set optimal values for the rotate and the stretch sliders. Pretty cruisy that. Uh, some more editing, visual cropping, 
internal editor has been adjusted, the user interface has been reworked, etc. etc. You can check out the video that I've linked down below from Gunther himself, the developer of LR Timelapse, what is new, and he shows some great demos in there. Now, let's kick on to the actual demo of me editing a holy grail time lapse from beginning to end. Oh, yeah, new splash screen by Mike Olbinski, the epic storm chaser himself. So, um, I've edited this before, so I'm going to clear all the metadata. So we're actually starting from scratch. This is how the sequence would appear if you load it for the first time in LR timelapse. So it is initializing the metadata. It is quickly reading the overall brightness value of uh, each photo. You can see all the settings here in these columns. On the left, you get a preview. You click that and you get a low resolution preview of what the sequence is. As you can see, this was shot on manual mode and I manually adjusted the exposure settings throughout the sunset when we were going from day to night. This is Barangaroo in Sydney, in case you're not aware or familiar with the area. A truly stunning sunset that really popped off around here. I've turned this into a time slice before and it's just very good. You don't have to know too much uh, because it's all gotten so optimized. You've, the first thing you do well, first you make sure that there's no rogue frames in there, but the first thing you do then is hit the keyframes wizard and decide how many keyframes you want to put in. Let's just go with, let's go 10, nice round number. Now you hit the holy grail wizard button and all done. <laughs> hit save. And this is normally where you would go into Lightroom to edit the sequence using the Lightroom sliders. However, as you can see on the right here, we can now edit all these settings ourselves within LR timelapse, which is of course the point here. So what do I want to do? I want to first of all change this white balance from as shot to custom because I want to make that a little bit warmer. So I'm going to slide that slider here. And as you can see, it's a little bit slower, but it is all within the one piece of software. So that's exciting. I'm also adding a little bit of exposure. I'm going to drop my highlights a bit. You can also use these plus and minuses. If you go normal click, you get one value increase. With shift click, you get 10 value increase. And with command click, you get 50 value increase. So that's obviously a little bit much. Here, I still want this to go up in warmth a little bit more. And I want these highlights to come down a bit more as well. So let's start with that. That is the first frame done. Now we go on to the next frame, these blue keyframes. You click this button here, which transfers the edits that you've done on this one photo to the next blue diamond keyframe. And then I'm going to bring down my exposure a bit because it is a sunset, but nothing else is necessary here. So click on the next one. You see the color is starting to come in here. Um, I forgot to add vibrance and saturation in the previous frames, so Two taps on both there with shift, so 20 points each. And now I can, with shift and click on this left arrow, I'm gonna sync that to the previous frames. There you go. Uh, just going to go back to that frame, go on to the next one and have a look at that. That is really quite beautiful. Um, don't wanna change anything to that frame really. Go on to the next one. This is where the color has gone out of the sky. So this is where I generally start to ramp down the white balance. So let's go quite a few clicks lower. So it goes more into the blue. Actually, you can go a little bit more. Let's drop down a thousand points. That's good. Sync that to the next one. And then you can slowly start bringing up those highlights as well. And drop that temperature another, say, 700. On to the next keyframe. It's getting a little bit too dark, so a little bit of exposure up the highlights as well. And I don't like those yellow office lights, so temperature goes down a little bit more again. Click onto the next frame. That's looking nice and blue. This is looking nice and neutral, so I'm happy with that. Up the exposure one more time. Click onto the next frame. You can see this yellow brightness curve here. Uh, with the diamonds is there's, those are the single frames that we're editing if you were to play that now that would flicker like crazy but we are at the end so i'm just going to apply that last edit 
and then you obviously want to, and this is why alert time lapse, time lapse exists, you want to transfer smoothly all those values between frames. So you just click the auto transition button, boom. And now it calculates which values have to gradually ramp. And it will generate visual previews. This visual preview button here, they're getting built this purple line. And you can see here the Adobe DNG converter or the digital negative converter is running like crazy in the background. This is super fast on my computer because it's a dumb, expensive computer. On my old laptop, uh, now everything would start freezing. <laughs> Uh, but this works uh, really fast on my M3 Max with uh, a lot of memory. This here is a little dip. There's something weird in the sequence. I'm not sure if it's user error or something that was read in the files, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that in case there's any outliers for uh, this purple line. It's already super smooth. Ah, and here we have a jump as well. So we're going to be refining that and I'm going to show you how to do that without having to rerun that whole sequence in case you do have a lower uh, speed computer. Ding, there you go, that's finished. So if I hit play now, it's generated previews for the entire sequence and here comes that nice sunset. Bosh, very nice. I could definitely add a little bit more contrast and saturation in there, but ooh, there was that flicker and there's another flicker coming up. Where was it? There we go, tiny one, a little jump in exposure so I want to fix this here I'm gonna with shift select across that frame I'm gonna click the visual deflicker button and I'm going to say multi-pass deflicker more accuracy and I'm gonna hit apply and then it is just recalculating what is in my selection so it doesn't recalculate the whole thing and now if I scroll over you see that exposure jump is gone in the purple line here so we're going to do the same here select uh where are we select a little bit down let's keep that nice and smooth let's say something like that visual the flicker let's just hit refine and let that run and you can keep doing this until it's flawless i prepped the sequence before and it kept showing this little jump as you can see there's still a little jump there but then you do another deflicker and then another and it just gets better and better as you go along. As you can see that jump has gotten a lot smaller now once again as well. And I'm going to, because there's a smaller uh, curve to be made across, just gonna hit visual deflicker again here and hit refine and see what comes out. And just like that, we have one step left to demo uh, the power of Bing. So now, a flawless smooth sequence um, the next step is to export I'm gonna jump that onto my desktop this is also uh, a, a new user interface name of the preset you can save your presets I'm always a ProRes guy so this is the codec I would use a ProRes SDR dynamic range you can go HDR if you go via Lightroom but that's for another video source resolution output size high quality you can go very high or ultra high but this will do with just high 25 frames a second for me one-on-one -on -one speed 4 to 2 color sampling legal TV video levels standard rec 709 gamut this uh, is more advanced and I cover that in some other videos you get warnings here if you have any warnings that are relevant and then post-processing you can add motion blur which we're not going to be doing uh, sharpening a copyright overlay timestamp overlay which is fun as well um, even time stamp subtitles I've never noticed that before and at the end, uh, you can show in Finder. That's all there is to it. You now hit export and render, and that will run. I'm not gonna let that actually run because that takes a toll on the computer. But uh, this is the before sequence, which I've used in some demo shots before. It's a nice sequence, but it needs the flickering and color grading. And this is what comes after very beautiful one of my favorite holy grails actually that i've done um and also it's from years ago when was it 2018 the 30th of may uh, so yeah quite quite a while ago because i'm shooting lumix now i don't have to shoot with this uh method of manually adjusting exposures it just does it in camera and it does it really well without any adjustments needed but i still use a lot of time lapse for a lot of my editing obviously uh, and i still get a lot of requests about how to use it so here we have Side by side, full
fully edited a raw holy grail sequence rendered into a high resolution master file using just LR time lapse 7 with a built in color grading tool without going onto any Adobe software except for the free Adobe DNG converter, which you need in the back. But yeah, it's free, so you don't give Adobe any money, which is nice. And that's that. Do you have any questions about time lapse photography at all? Let me know in the comments down below. I've linked Gunter's channel under this video, which is very valuable for some advanced LR time lapse uh, tutorials and knowledge. If you buy LR time lapse via my link, I make a small percentage of that sale at no extra cost to you. If you want to learn more about time lapse, I've got a free ebook for you, and I've also got a paid course that you can check out. So that's all I've got for you. Happy shooting. May the clouds be in your favor. Adios.